Hello class, in this video I'm going to do exercise 8.27, or at least explain how to do 8.27. We already do 8.27 in lecture, so there's a little bit of a repetition here. But since you have to do um, these sorts of proofs for your homework, you have to do 8.26, 8.29, and 8.30. 8.27 is the one that's most analogous to those, and so I think going over this a little bit more with a specific eye to explaining to you how to use what we do in 8.27 to solve those other ones, I think would be a helpful exercise. I also have a separate video doing 8.28 for you, but that one, since it's using a biconditional to prove a contradiction, that's rather different in its approach uh, in the approach you need to take to it than these other ones. So let's say something about 8.27. This is proving a biconditional conclusion. This thing is a tautology, so we get no premises at all. So that's why this is very much like 2.6, 2.9, and 3.0. How are we going to approach this then? Remember what we did in lecture. So we said when we see such a thing, oops, uh, what we have to do is we have to figure out how to prove a biconditional. That's just biconditional intro. The fundamental thing to know about conditionals and biconditionals is whenever you have one of those in a conclusion, the easiest way is always to work backward, assume the antecedent and try to get to the consequent. Or when you have a biconditional, you just have to do two things. Assume the antecedent going one direction and get to the consequent, and then assume the antecedent going the other direction and get to the consequent. So anytime you see a biconditional conclusion, sketch out two subproofs that look structurally like this. Or if you just have a single conditional conclusion, sketch out the subproof for it. So let me then say something about what you need to be doing for 8.26. Look, here's an arrow conclusion. Employ that strategy. Sketch out a subproof. Put the antecedent in the, in the assumption line and put the consequent in the conclusion line. And then reevaluate and see what your new intermediary conclusion is. Or 8.29. Hey, look, here's uh, a biconditional conclusion. Let's put the, the left-hand side in the assumption line of a subproof, and let's put the right-hand side in the conclusion. And then we need another subproof, a separate subproof, with the right-hand side in the assumption line and the left-hand side as its last line in its conclusion. Uh, ditto for 8.30. Uh, so uh, sketching all of those out then is going to give you a bunch of different specific tasks. So then all you have to do is know how to get from P arrow Q to this Boolean thing, not P or Q. Uh, or for this one, all you have to do is know how to get from not P arrow Q to P and not Q. Indeed, we did those sort of subproofs already in class. So you should be able to know how to do these specific techniques. And of course, for both of these, you have to go in the reverse direction. Now, Understanding 8.27 thoroughly will also help you with those tasks a little bit. So let me say something more about this. In Fitch, I pulled up what this exercise is. So you can see uh, I've sketched out, oops, I didn't mean to cite that. I sketched out our plan here exactly. I, I reproduced my conclusion on the last line of this, and then above that I sketched out two subproofs, one with the going from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and then the other one going in the opposite direction. Of course, once I get that done, I can just cite biconditional intro and cite those two subproofs, and it's going to check out great. Now, none of the rest of this checks out, but that does at least. So I just have to do these two little tasks now and figure out how to get, for example, from P arrow Q arrow R to P and Q arrow R. Now, how do I do that, you might be thinking. Uh, well, remember, the same plan applies here. Look at my premise and conclusion and their main connective. I have an arrow premise. Okay, well, I can't do anything with just one arrow premise. You have to have the antecedent. And don't just assume the antecedent for no reason. You have to earn the right to the antecedent. So let's just look at my conclusion. It's an arrow conclusion. And remember, anytime you have an arrow conclusion, you know what to do. We need to sketch out a new subproof. We need to put our premise, or excuse me, our antecedent as of the premise. And then we need to get down to the consequent. So it'll be something like this. I need to go from P and Q to R. And now I just need to fill in this gap. Now you might realize how you're going to get your antecedent, or you might just look at the main connective of this thing and see it's a conjunction, so you could bring down the parts, P and the Q. But since we did this in lecture, I won't do it all for you here. But the whole point is the same techniques that allow you, in these other cases, to set the proof up in general, i.e. noticing this is a biconditional and sketching out a couple of subproofs, will also be helpful techniques to working out each of those subproofs and the specific mechanics in it. Now, sometimes those techniques will just be uh, arrow ideas that you need to employ. Sometimes they will be ideas that you uh, have previously mastered from the Boolean connectives. But one way or another, everything that you've learned in this course will um, help you work through those. Okay, so that's uh, my recap of 8.27 and how to use the ideas from that to make some progress on some of the other problems you need to do for the homework. Thanks.